Hey everybody, happy Sunday. <laughs> How's it going? Good to see everybody. I can't see you. How can I see you? Um, cheers and happy Sunday to everybody and happy October to everybody. Yes, um, from my kiss cup. Cup spelt with a K, of course, but uh, yeah, summer's officially over. Officially. I don't want to hear anything about that. Green Day song right now about September ending, you know, that kind of Chris. But um, yeah, um, cheers to everybody. Did we have a great summer? I think we did. We yeah, it was a great, it was a good summer for us. Um, cheers, lots of live shows, lots of stuff, fun stuff. Who was your favorite live show you saw this summer? I challenge you to actually comment because there's a lot of more people out there to watch that don't comment. That's fine. I don't comment on a lot. Of, I don't comment on a lot of videos or shows or that kind of thing. This show was inspired by a guy named Tom Bukovac, who is um, I kind of just started watching through the uh, pandemic, and then he just basically sat in his garage and put his phone up, and and just inspired me to say, hey, you know, something I shouldn't be. I'm not going to worry too much about the production of these videos. You know, I'm. I'm, I'm kind of tired of seeing people's inter Instagram videos where they're shredding perfectly um, cascading notes and it's obviously recording that they're miming themselves to. Um, I just, uh, anything you hear from me live on my TikTok videos and that is, is live on right off the floor. So that's the way you should be doing it. <laughs> Anyways, I think if you, if, hey, if you can do it live off the floor and have the beautiful production sound, you know, more power to you, you know, that's awesome. It's awesome. But uh, anyways, getting back to our regular scheduled program, Craig Chikiso of Jefferson Starship uh, was not in the airplane, uh, but he was also in Starship and basically went on to, a, after he left Starship, went on to just do instrumental music and live his own life comfortably because, you know, some of these, sometimes these guys are had enough with touring and running around and jumping in buses and planes and air, in hotels and they want to stay home and make money and he did make a lot of money because all those big hits in uh, for starship including jane which is an incredible song um he played the guitar solo in jane uh he's one of those unsung heroes because all of those jefferson starship and starships guitar parts that you heard and you know it might not be the mainstream you know of guitar playing that we know to love big names middle names you know lower tier higher tier we talked about that before um this guy's an unsung hero because he's on the radio i mean i heard all these i listen to a lot of um, you know i listen to a lot of yacht rock and the bridge these days and there's uh a lot of great old 70s songs that you hear and some of those old Jefferson Starship songs like Miracles and and uh, you know uh, just some incredible stuff with Marty Balin, uh, Balin, Balin, Marty Balin on vocals, uh, rest in peace. Um, and then of course Mickey Thomas from Starship who had the incredibly high voice, incredible singer uh, who sang Jane. Um, but all those guitar parts are are Craig, and uh, there's some beautiful guitar solos, some beautiful, tasteful leads that are just uh, timeless in my opinion. And um, and he's a, he's a great guitar player, unsung hero. Uh, he shows up every year on his birthday because he played a Carvin double neck on the song I just played for you earlier, which is called "Find Your Way Back," off of I believe the album was called "Freedom at Point Zero in the '80s. And great lineup of of Starship then, you know, Mickey Thomas on vocals, and uh, Craig on guitar, Dave Friedberg uh, bass, Ainsley Dunbar on drums, and of course Paul Kantner and Pete Sears who were original members of uh, the Starship or Jefferson Starship. So it's Jefferson Airplane was the original band from the 70s, or sorry, I'm sorry, for the 60s, 
Craig met Paul Kantner while the airplane was still happening, did a bunch of recording for him. He was 16 at the time, just, just to let you know. I don't know what it's about San Francisco and, and recruiting young young guys to play. <laughs> because, you know, the Neil Sean story is like that, too, where he was playing with, you know, uh, Santana at a very early age, played with Eric Clapton at a very early age, and then, you know, of course, had a huge career with Journey. But... Uh, same with Craig. He was 16 years old doing some recording for Kantner on some Jefferson Airplane stuff. And then Airplane disbanded. They started a new band called Jefferson Starship. And guess who was the guitar player? Craig. So, um, and then he went on to to play with him in the 70s. But, you know, cheers to Craig Chikiso. Uh, another cool story is I actually did my research today <laughs> and actually looked up some stuff on people before, you know, before coming on here and just hit and record but um craig was in a car accident with his with his father at 12 i think he was from sacramento um a huge a terrible car accident where he broke uh, arms legs you know lots of bones in his body it was in a huge cast and his dad said uh you know les paul was in a car crash and they set his they set his casts uh, for his two arms that were broken in the playing position for guitar, so he could still practice. So and uh, so Craig tried to do that. No, he, I don't think they said his cast, but he tried to play and he could barely play. He just still tried to play his guitar when when he was being uh, when he's recovering from the accident. And his father said, "I'll buy you a Les Paul after this is all done," and he recovered. And he bought him a Les Paul. He continued to be a Les Paul player through all of Starship. All of, uh, eh, you know, all of uh, the seventies, anyways. So that was Les Paul. Let's, let's face it, that was a, that was the seventies era, wasn't it? Of the Les Paul, everybody played the Les Paul in the seventies, pretty much, anyways. But, uh, but then, you know, as the eighties came in, he he saw him playing the Carvins. Carvins. What do you know about Carvins out there? Carvin, Carvin was the first <laughs> mail order guitar, way ahead of its time. Mail order company didn't have stuff in stores. Um, you had to basically or fill out an order for them and they mailed these guitars to you and this was in the 70s this was way before Amazon and uh, and the internet and all this kind of stuff so that's the way they did their business and they and they grew their business that way sorry to change gears quickly there but the you know the carving guitars are uh, are pretty uh, amazing things I went to a uh, really well-built guitars. I went to Car the Carvin store in the early 90s when I was in Los Angeles. Um, amazing place. Uh, Carvin, was, at that time, Carvin was being a... Uh, Steve Vai endorsed Carvin. I think he still plays some Carvin stuff here and there. But uh, he had the heads. And I think Steve played the Carvin heads well into the David Lee Roth era of, uh, of his career. So they had incredible Marshall style amps and some really inventive guitars really inventive looking guitars and uh, Craig played a lot of Carvin's weird shapes and stuff like that in, in, uh, in the Starship years that being said let's talk a little bit about uh, a little story a little concept that I I tend to call one-man bands um, a friend of mine I'm not going to name the name because he's a good, good, good friend of mine, but he'll know who I'm talking about when he sees this. Uh, uh, something came up where a few friends of mine were involved in this. Uh, something came up where we were talking about how you go see a band with a big name. Let's say Queensryche. Let's be neutral here and call it Queensryche. You go see Queensryche these days, and I believe there's only two original members in the band, and it's the bass player and, at the time, the second guitarist. He's now the you know the full-time guitarist, Chris Giarmo. But Michael Wilton uh, was the second guitarist, or you know, it's hard to say that because they're both playing leads, but. Um, but songwriting wise, he was considered, you know, Jar Jarmo was doing more of this, the writing. Anyways, they're out on the road. And do you go see Queensryche now? Because it's not the same band. It's And Queensryche was really well known for Jeff Tate's vocals. 
So is that really, uh, are you really getting what, you, what you're paying for? And I find these days um, there's real fans of bands that Queensryche will know that and they'll go see it because they want to see the music. But then there's some kind of, you know, on the fringe fans that say, hey, I, I hear Queensryche all the time on, on Sirius, on Hair Nation. Let's go buy a ticket to Queensryche and you go there and it's not the same same thing and maybe you're disappointed but you know I think you really should as I get a trunk says I think you really should do your homework do your homework and and know what the lineups are know what's happening with the band especially if bands you know there's talk on Eddie trunk show about uh, Don Dawkins who's not the same vocally live now and you should know that going in and not going there and saying wow that was bad you know what was going on Meanwhile, a true fan would know Don Dawkins has a lot of health issues, can't really sing the way he sang before. Um, a lot of these guys should be calling it a day, but they don't. They love playing, and they want to get out there and play and see people, and maybe they do need the money in some situations because no one knows their true situations out there, and uh, that could be, could be part of it. So anyhow... You know, do you go see these? Do you go see these bands that may not be what the name on the ticket is? Case in point, I'm going to see Warrant, Quiet Riot, and Helix next uh, next weekend uh, at Casino Rama up in uh, Orillia, Ontario, or Rama, Ontario, I guess. Um, Warrant. I think they have three three guys that were in the band at the heyday. Definitely, obviously, singer Janie Lane has has passed away. I think I think Robert Mason is singing with uh, with Warren for a long time now. Um, Quiet Riot is on the bill. Who, um, unfortunately, Kevin DeBro and uh, the drummer's name who <laughs> escapes me now. That's terrible. Sorry about that, guys. Um, are passed away. And I think Rudy Sarzo, Rudy Sarzo, bass player, original bass player from the Heyday, is back in the band. I think because Rudy does a lot of stuff. And Carlos Calvazo is not in the band. Who was their main guitar player that you hear soloing on "Come On Here, Feel the Noise" and in a Metal Health album. So, is that real? Is it real? So. You be the judge. You think? You, how do you feel? I think you should go see these bands because they're still representing the music. I think you should do your homework. Sorry, the water's running upstairs. <laughs> I think you should do your homework and know what you're getting. I think that's it. That's all I'm going to say about that. Anyhow, have a great, great October. We have some shows coming up in October. Some showcases for the school. Lots of Bridge on Fire shows. Um, Jacob played a great show at the Block. Thank you. Thanks again to Troy and the Block and Anna for a great show on Friday night at the Block in Burlington. Have a great one, guys. See you next week. I'll have a full report of that Warrant, Quiet Riot, and Helix show. Hey, to my friends on Facebook that are in Helix, love you guys. You rock. CKZ. See ya. Bye-bye.